this young boy uh, died in a hospital in Thailand three days after being admitted to hospital, and he was killed by a bite from the most dangerous animal on earth. What is it? That's a clue. Okay. So she killed him by infecting him with dengue. And uh, uh, dengue is a, a viral disease transmitted by a particular mosquito. There's no vaccine, there's no cure, there's no specific drugs. It's, on the, it's increasing in incidence and severity around the world. There are 100 million cases of dengue in the world every year. But if we could, and there are mosquito nets, bed nets, and, and no protection against this mosquito because it bites in the daytime. But if we could control this mosquito, then we could control this disease. But the mosquitoes breed in small dispersed pools of clean rainwater, and it, finding them by inspection is, is essentially impossible, uh, which really just leaves area-wide spraying of insecticides, space spraying, as shown here, which is environmentally um, unattractive and also ineffective at preventing uh, the mosquito. But there's one thing that's exquisitely uh, good at finding female mosquitoes, and that's male mosquitoes. And when they find them in the normal way of things, you get lots of baby mosquitoes, and so the population expands and, and, and continues. But if we could uh, release engineered sterile mosquitoes into the population, they would compete for mates, and, any, and they would mate with what, the wild females, and then they, those wild females would have no progeny. And so the population would decline, and that's the basis of the idea and the control method. And we call this method RIDL, or RIDL. And uh, this might seem crazy, but it's based on a, a tried and tested technology that's been around for 50 years, using insects sterilized by radiation. But unfortunately for mosquitoes, the radiation sterilized mosquitoes are rather sickly, because you have to remember that there are still wild mosquitoes out there, and they're competing for mates with our sterile uh, mosquitoes, and, and the ladies have a choice. And if they don't look li like the look of the sterile ones, they won't mate with them, and then you have lots of babies, and the, and the control method won't work. So, uh, a partic two particular features of this method is firstly that the male mosquitoes will actively seek out the female mosquitoes. They'll look for you without you needing to send inspectors. They are exquisitely evolved to do that. Some might say that's all males are good at. They also, but also they only mate with females of their own species and not with anything else. So there are no off-target effects on other, on other insects in the environment, the beneficial insects and harmless in insects that we need in the ecosystem. So I talked about a radiation sterilized method. One of the success stories of this system was the elimination on a continental scale of a very nasty insect called the New World Screwworm, which burrows into animals and kills them. It's been eliminated from North America, Central America, all the way down to Panama. Reinvasion from the still infested South America is prevented by continuous release of sterile insects in a barrier zone. That program saves $1.3 billion of economic damage each year at a cost of $10 million. This is another multi-billion dollar pest insect. It's the Mediterranean fruit fly. This factory in Guatemala produces 2 billion sterile male medfly every week. That's over 20 tons a week of sterile male medfly. So if you wonder whether this can be done at scale, it really can. Uh, how far have we got with this technology? We've built the strains and we're on the point of going out into open field trials with them. We believe that this technology is not only environmentally attractive, but also can be delivered at an affordable price to the countries that need it. Of course, it is a genetic engineering technology. GM food is quite controversial in some countries, as you know, not least Europe, where I come from. But, but recombinant DNA technology in the form of insulin and recombinant vaccines is well accepted. So for health applications, it has been well accepted. And what's the alternative? It's widespread use of insecticides and even despite that, epidemic dengue, 100 million cases around the year. So what's the alternative? Where have we got to? This is our lean agricultural pest. This is a, the pink bollworm, a moth whose larvae eat cotton. And in, in three years of open field trials with our USDA Department of Agriculture collaborators, Last year, they released from aircraft 15 million of our engineered moths, over 2,500 acres of cotton in Arizona. The trials were extremely successful. The insects did exactly what they were supposed to do. Uh, we also work on some other uh, agricultural pests, not least Mediterranean fruit fly, which I, talked, which I mentioned earlier. One of the strengths of this technology is that it can be readily applied to quite a wide range of species, both agricultural pests and also mosquitoes, and therefore mosquito-borne disease. Where do I think we'll be in five or 10 years' time? I think we will have rolled back dengue from the countries that take a lead on implementing this technology, and we'll be fighting it in additional countries that have followed on from there. And similarly with malaria, we'll be pushing back malaria from countries where this technology can be applied. None of this will be done solo. It will all be done with other partners, and in many cases using a combination of approaches, not just the one I suggested. This recent cartoon uh, illustrates the hope that in this new Chinese year of the ox, we'll be able to defeat this, uh, this mosquito. I don't think that will happen in one year, but I'm hopeful that Oxitex engineered mosquitoes will be able to do 
what this cartoon ox probably can't do and defeat this uh, mosquito and this deadly disease. Thank you.